Himalika is helping ensure that value chains develop in a way that will not only increase profits but also reduce vulnerability to future shocks. Himalika is also training local artisans and working with the private sector to combine traditional practices like traditional handloom weaves in Bangladesh with innovative designs. This is creating new opportunities for artisans to generate additional income while preserving local traditions and to give rural producers a competitive advantage and greater control over the production and sale of their products Himalika works with local cooperatives to improve bargaining power and strengthen linkages to the market in addition to diversifying income generating options Himalika has been working with local institutions to build capacity to plan for the future a bottom up planning approach that includes strengthening local community and government institutions is helping to ensure communities concerns are reflected in regular government programs and strategies Himalika has provided support to local governments in southern Bhutan to training on micro planning to ensure communities concerns are integrated in their five year programs Work with communities is combined with research to provide evidence that is helping policy and decision makers support communities in building resilience into the future. For example, after a thorough assessment of ecosystem services in the Indi Lake area of Myanmar, Himalika developed guidelines for responsible ecotourism with two national ministries and the private sector. As the destination's popularity rises among tourists, the newly developed destination management plan and guidelines for ecologies will help ensure tourism activities are sustainable and the benefits of tourism are diversified and benefit rural producers living around in Le Lake. And in Pakistan, research on the economic value of pollinators in apple orchards has caught the attention of both orchard owners and policymakers. With the benefits of honeybees clear beekeepers many of whom are poor and landless are gaining recognition for the important role they play in sustaining this important cash crop Himalika research and experience is also feeding into the development of national action plans for adaptation in Nepal and Myanmar and strategic actions for livelihood diversification in participating countries The stories of communities across the HKH continue to evolve in the face of emerging challenges and opportunities. Himalika's experience has made it clear that a combination of enhanced knowledge, strengthened institutions, and smarter planning at both local and national levels is essential to prepare communities for what tomorrow may bring. gender component of high cap uh, we have three major questions that we are asking the first question is what is the gender impact of climate change on men and women in this region how are they being affected differently i you know we know that literature talks about these different impacts uh, but in in a lot of places it has also been raised that we we need data to show exactly how it is affecting men and women differently the second question that we are asking through this program is uh, you know Uh, what are the existing um, adaptation practices uh, followed by men and women in the region and what are their current adaptive uh, capacities to deal with these changes and the third step is having identified uh, the impacts of climate change on men and women and the gaps in adaptive capacities of these men and women we pilot uh, certain action research uh, to say how can we enhance these capacities Um so we have uh, really combined these three steps together in the gender component uh, and we have complemented this by integrating gender very strongly in other components of high cap which include ecosystems and and food security and vulnerability and adaptation 
so all in all it has a uh, you know really uh, very very cohesive approach on not just mainstreaming gender but also trying to get gender specific information for the region on climate change विगत में हमें अलैची खेती कर फिर परंपरा परंपरागत तरीका ग जब अलैची खेती हमें नया मटो में खेती गये खेती कर फिर छ सात वर्षसम राम उत्पादन दिए समस्या देखा पर्द आयो समस्या देखा पड़े हमीर जीविकोपार्जन को लगी गाड़ो होने गए जीविकोपार्जन में गाड़ो गई सके हमीर अब यह के करने वाले किसान बहुत रह हम हमीर आमदानी कम भैस पीछे हमें आर्थिक समस्या ने गाँचना थालियो रही सुझ विचार भी करें अब अलैची को यही स्थिति नहीं होने वाले अब आप गाँव घर में बस होते विदेश जान पर्ला भाई सको युद्ध नहीं वातावरण जलवायु संग युद्ध करूर्ने वातावरण विदरस तालीम सके हमीर ते खाल अनुभव भेला हमी काम को सुरुआत करते पैला हमें यहाँ अगड़ी हम जो गाई गोबर मल हम के लाने थे तेरे तो पिशाब संकलन करें झोलमल बनाएर तेस में बगान में लाने अलैची बगान में लाने सब सीखने पे अब हम तो सब कर अलैची पैला का भाई धेरे सुधार आए रहे अलग जस्त कि पोहर अगले वर्ष ये साहब राम थे जब अभी हमें जो पिशाब लाए पे टुसार भी राम भी राहन था हिमालय क्या हमें के सीप सीका झोलमोल अत्यंत प्रभावकारी होने रहे बिरुआ में तरकारी में अलैची में हाल फिर यह मैं यहाँ भोलि पे टमाटर रोपने लगने सुशीर में अलैची बगान टिपी सके पड़ी चार केजी मल दी रो चार केजी मल दी सके इस छापो दुई इंच जी जिनी दुई इंच दी सके इसलिए चिशियान बचाएर राख रूल फुल भाग अगाड़ी यो अलैची फेरी चार केजी मल दी चार केजी दी सके पड़ी इस झार चार केजी दी सके फिर छापो दिने इसलिए झार आना दीदेन रगान सफा भी पार् चार केजी मल दिए मैं चाहे अलैची राम लिना सफल भैसम यो पीठ कना को मैं यो पड़े पानी संकलन करना यो पीठले रो अलिक मल रारपात ले छोपे बिरुआ ने सोचे लिख सकता यह बदमिदो मौसम रो जलवायु परिवर्तनसंग जुझ्न को लगी हमी चिशियान बचाए राख् पर्ने हो चिशियान बचे चिशियान आसपास को बिरुआ ले चिशियान अलैची करने अलैची खेती करने किसान तरकारी खेती करने किसान सिंचाई को व्यवस्थापन करद अब अलवायु परिवर्तन को साथ साथ अभी खोला में पानी सुक्ने अम वर्षा होने पांच छ हजार लीटर पानी इसलिए एक चोटी में छ सात रोपनी जगह सिंचाई कर सकता रो फिर एकदम सान जहाँ से एकदम थोड़े मात्रा में पानी सानो पानी तेस्त में इसमें ठूल म जमा पारने हो 
पाइप में लगे स्प्रिंकल घुमा भी सकता Dear ladies and gentlemen, just a quick request from our EC Mode colleagues who are in the room. Can you uh, give your space to our delegates who are waiting outside? Thank you. Um, as you know, there's uh, arrangements in two places for our ECMOD colleagues and those participants who cannot uh, fit inside this hall. Thank you.
the ladies and gentlemen those participants who are here for the poster competition can you please go next to your posters outside there are seats arranged for you any participants who are here for the posters no thank you Dear ladies and gentlemen may i please have your attention please kindly take your seats Once again dear ladies and gentlemen please kindly take your seats We are about to begin the inaugural program and there are some housekeeping announcements to be made Please kindly remember to switch your mobile phones to silent mode now May I please remind you all to switch your mobile phones to silent mode now. You are requested to kindly stand when the right honorable president enters the hall and please kindly continue to stand as the Nepal national anthem will be played. May I please remind you that once the right honorable president enters the hall all the doors will be closed in this hall and at the end of the inaugural program the right honorable president along with the dignitaries on the dais and the dignitaries who are in the first two rows will exit through this door for a group photo All guests are kindly requested to be seated and in a while exit through that door on my right. Thank you for your cooperation dear ladies and gentlemen. May I please request the following uh, excellencies and dignitaries to kindly come up on the stage. Professor Dr. Gower Rizvi Advisor to Prime Minister Government of Bangladesh please kindly take your seat Limpo Ishi Dorji Minister Ministry of the Agriculture and Forest Government of Bhutan
Dr. V.K. Saraswat, member of the National Institute of Transforming India, Niti Aayog, India. Her Excellency, Veronika Kodi, Ambassador of the Delegation of the European Union to Nepal. Dasha Rinzing Dorji, Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest Government of Bhutan. He's on his way. Okay. Yes. Dasha Rinzing Dorji, Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest Government of Bhutan, and also the Chair of the Isimod Board of Governors. Limpo Ishi Dorji, Minister of the Ministry of Agriculture, Forest, and Government of Bhutan. A video is being played to keep you engaged while we are waiting for the president. Thank you. To share state-of-the-art knowledge and explore the next frontiers on resilience building in the Hindu-Kush Himalaya. Build partnerships for action across boundaries. And create a roadmap for resilience and transformative change in the Hindu-Kush Himalaya. A resilient Hindu-Kush Himalaya means a better future for Asia. Join us, Resilient Hindu Kush Himalaya, developing solutions towards a sustainable future for Asia. program works at three levels. First, understanding science. Second, uh, at the policy level. And the third is at the practice level.
so we do we first of all very high quality Minister science Chaudhary, we first understand and what climate change is all about for the mountain community and what is the impact of climate change on water on weather on ecosystem on in adjusting their policies according to what we see as a result of uh, climate change taking place in the Himalayan region. So we have some very interesting, low-cost, affordable, effective pilots. We don't do large-scale implementation, we, but we do some pilots. And for example, some one of the pilots is Climate Smart Villages. We bring together very simple technologies and approach by which people themselves can use these approaches, technologies and be better responsive to the changing climate and be better prepared for the changing climate. And a very basic fundamental approach is that we just play the role of facilitator. So in two years time, whether ECMOD is there or not for them, they will carry on with their, their interventions. And that's the whole philosophy principle behind the climate smart approach. What we are targeting at it at now is how to ensure that this research which we have done, the knowledge which we have generated, is used by the policy makers. And this requires a lot of proactive approach. And we have been working with different governments, different policy makers through formal and informal contacts to share with them our results, to talk in their own language that how so that they understand what uh, the the importance of the issue is. With that, we are being invited also to various places by various governments to contribute to to their action adaptation action plans to their adaptation policy and we look for such opportunities to share our our knowledge and uh, with a very clear aim that unless the knowledge generated under high cap is used by by policy makers by politicians by decision makers there is not much point in carrying uh, out such research so we the second half of HICAP is going to focus on uptake of the research work which we have done and we are really trying to put our resources and efforts for that particular purpose. Villages in the Ratu watershed of southeast Nepal live under constant threat of flash flood during the monsoon season. According to government records over the last decade, floods have killed over a dozen people, destroyed more than 350 houses, and damaged large areas of forest and farmland. In communities across the flood-prone Ratu watershed, a large number of men have left their homes to work overseas. With the most vulnerable groups, women, children, the elderly, and the disabled left behind. अब महिलाहरु भने को र बच्चाहरु भने को र वृद्धहरु भने का इन्हीं हरु चाहिए जो most vulnerable group मा पर्चन बाड़ी बाटर पीड़ित होने सब बंदा body attack करने यही group लाई हो र early warning system पनी चाहिए यही group लाई हो. With men absent from many households. Women must play an even larger role in how their families respond to disaster. For this, getting flood information in time is critical. In 2014, a new community-based flood early warning system was piloted by the Department of Hydrology and Meteorology's Community-Based Flood and Glacial Lake Outburst Risk Reduction Project in partnership with Isimod's Koshi Basin Program. The system uses simple technology to monitor river levels and puts communities in control of flood information. When a sensor installed in the river detects rising water levels, 
A signal is sent to a receiver in the home of a system caretaker, who then sounds an alarm to their entire community and also warns other villages downstream of possible danger. This system ensures that even remote villages, like those along the Ratu River, can get near real-time flood information, giving these communities at least an extra hour to move valuable assets and people to safety. These community-based flood early warning systems where the communities are in control, where women have a large part, have really leveled the playing field. Everybody gets that kind of information. In the past, women had to depend on the men in their family, who would patrol the river on foot, for information about oncoming floods. With a new system in place, they are able to get the information they need when they need it most, even when men are not at home. The system is complemented by activities. Any flood information will help them improve flood preparedness and reduce vulnerabilities, both in their own households as well as in their communities. This is a story about change. It isn't about one person, or one skill, or one project. It is about how a combination of simple practices and key linkages can help change the narrative of communities living in the Hindu Kush Himalaya. From poverty to prosperity. From vulnerability to security. From day-to-day -day adaptation to reducing risks. Not only those related to climate change, but also to other changes like market fluctuations and rising male outmigration. By helping rural producers diversify their sources of income and by providing a package of practices to improve the risk and ensure that value chains develop in a way that only increase profits and reduce vulnerability. Himalika is also in local options and working with the private sector combine traditional practices like handloom weaves in Bangladesh with designs. This is creating new opportunities to generate additional income while preserving local traditions. To give rural producers a competitive and greater control over the production and sale of their product, Malika works with local cooperatives to improve buying power and strengthen linkages to the to diversifying income generations, Malik can work working with local institutions to build capacity to plan for the future. A bottom-up planning approach that includes strengthening local community and government institutions is helping ensure all communities' concerns are lifted in writing programs and strategies. Malik has provided support to local government and the on micro planning to help communities' concerns. Work with communities combined with research quite advanced helping policy and decision makers support communities in the future. 
for example, a person of the in the Indian Lake area of Myanmar, Myanmar developed guidelines for responsible ecotourism with two national ministries and the private sector. As the destination's popularity rises among tourists, developed destination and and for ecology will help ensure activities are sustainable. The best tourism are diversified will produce around in the lake. And in Pakistan, research on the economic value of natives in Apple has caught the attention of autonomous and policy making. With the benefits of honey is clear, beekeepers, Mifuma, poor and landless, again, for the important role they play in sustaining this important cash crop. Himala research and experience into the development of national Adaptation in Nepal and Myanmar. And actions for livelihood and education in participating countries. The stories of communities across the edge continue to evolve in the face of emergencies and opportunities. This experience has clear that a combination of enhanced knowledge, strengthened institutions, and smart planning at all national levels is essential. to show exactly how it is affecting men and women. Adaptation practices uh, followed by men and women in the region and what are their current adaptive uh, capacities to deal with these changes. And the third step is having identified uh, the impacts of climate change on men and women and the gaps and adaptive capacities of these men and women. We pilot uh, certain action research uh, to see how can we enhance these capacities. Um, so we have uh, really combined these three steps together in the gender component uh, and we have complemented this by integrating gender very strongly in other components of HICAP which include ecosystems and, and food security and vulnerability and adaptation. So all in all it has a you know, really a very, very cohesive approach on not just mainstreaming gender but also trying to get gender specific information for the region on climate change. विगत में आमले ऑनलाइन ची खेती वादा फेरी परंपर परंपरा का स्वतः कलिक गरीब थे जब ऑनलाइन ची खेती आमले नया मार्टो में खेती गरीब खेती वादा फेरी छः सात वर्षों समय आम्र उत्पादन दियो समस्या देखा पड़ दे आयो समस्या देखा पड़े बस यहाँ मिला है जीबी को पार्जन को लागी गार होना पड़े जीबी को पार्जन में आम दामी कम भाई शक पहुँची है आम लाई आर्थिक समस्या लेकिन इसने थाली और महिले तक केस विचार में नहीं बारे बने अब अलग चीज़ ये स्थिति नहीं होने वाली जैसे अब अपनों का वार में पास है उन्हें ना विदेश जान पर ला बनने लाइक शक युद्ध नहीं करने पर सा बात अपन जलवायु संगा युद्ध करने पर सा बनने बात अपन बीतोरु संग तालिम ली सके पसी हमें ले ते खाल को अनुभव करो भेला करते हैं आमी काम को शुरुआत करते हैं
पहले हमें यहाँ आ गए थे हमें रूई या जैसे गाय को बार मॉल और हमें केला आने थे अंतिहरा तो पिसाब संकलन करे रा झोल मल बनाया रा तो इसमें बगन मल आऊँ ना अलाइसी बगन मल आऊँ तो सब इसी काम करे साइले आमिर तो सब इगोर देशम रा अलाइ अलाइसी पहला का वंदा धेरे ही सुधार आये साइले जैसे कि पूर अगले वर्ष ऐसा राम रथी ना जब आइले आमिर जून पिसाब और लाइफ ऐसी तू सारे पनी राम भी डाना था ले अम्म ये बीरुआ माँ तरकारी माँ अलग चीज़ माल दाखिल आयु चीज़ माले ये नहीं रे पोली पच्ची टोमेटो और नहीं चीज़ माल दाखिल आयु चीज़ माले ये नहीं रे पोली पच्ची टोमेटो और नहीं चीज़ माल दाखिल आयु चीज़ माले ये नहीं रे पोली पच्ची टोमेटो और नहीं चीज़ माल दाखिल आयु चीज़ माले ये नहीं रे पोली पच्ची टोमेटो और नहीं चीज़ यो अलग चिलाए फेरी चार के जी मॉल दिनी चार के जी दी सके पछाड़ी ये ले जार रहो न चार के जी दी सके बजी फेरी छापो दिनी ये ले जार आऊना पनी दी देना और अब बगान ले सफा पनी पार सा चार के जी मॉल दिए रा महिले ची अलग ची रैमरो दी नलाई सफल भाई आइले सम्मा यो पीठ कीने बनाए को बने महिले यो पौरे को पानी लाई संकलन करना गौर सायो पीठले रायो अलग इति मॉल रा इसमें आते हैं जार पाते छोपे पाची बीर वाले सोचे रहने से अच्छा यो बहुत भी तो मौसम रायो जलबायु परिवर्तन संग जुड़ना को लगी हमें ले चीजें बहुत चायरा रखने पड़ने हैं उनसा रायो चीजें बहुत चे को चीजें ना आसपास को बीर वाले खाम चीजें अलग ची गर्ने अलग ची खेती गर्ने किसान ने ले तार कैरी खेती गर्ने किसान ने ले चाहे सिंचाई को व्यवस्था पन गर्नु पार्ना सम अब आइले जल वायु परिवर्तन उस आसार ते आइले चाहे अब खोला में पानी सुकने अनु कम वर्षा होने पांच सौ हजार लीटर पानी सा ये ले एक चुटी में छः सात रुपनी जगह लाइ चाहे स जहाँ से एकदम थोड़े मात्रा में पानी सा, सानो पानी सा तेज तेज तो माचे इसमें ठुलो मात जमा पार नहीं हो अनि पाइप में लगे रहो स्प्रिंग कॉल घुमाना वाली सॉकिंग सा यो चाहे आधुनिक बढ़ती हो इसमें चाहे यो अलग चीज़ सुकाऊं तो फिर डायरेक्ट धुआं लाग दे ना अलग चीज़ लाय में सुकाऊं तो फिर अलग चीज़ को रैप मत रैपले मत है शुक्ला तो वहाँ से तो चिमनी बाटा बाहर जान सा और ऑनलाइन ची ये इस बाटा उत्पादित ऑनलाइन ची गुणस्तरीय होने सा यार जो चने वड़ा खाद्य के रूप में जब खाद्य के रूप में जब प्रयोग करेंगे वह कुनाले यूएस को बाजार अंतर्राष्ट्रीय जैन अलग मैग राम रो होने सा वहाँ ने उदेश्य ले है मैं गेडिंग करियों राती ने लाई छुट्टा छुट्टाई रूप में पैकेजिंग करियों ये सो कर दाखिली रा पहले को जून हमें ले पहले अगाडी बेचे का ऑनलाइन ची को मूल्य बंदा जाएं पांच हजार छह हजार का रुपये बड़ी में दाम लीना सफल भाइयों आई यू मेरे मुड़ा आरी चांग चांग रहे रा रहे कुछ यू ची क्यों बंदरी म यो महिले रुपए को दो महीना आगाडी रुपए को इसको उत्पादन छह महीना पचाड़ी होने चाह रो आइले सीता के चाव चीं वो मार्केट बाजार में राम प्रसाद यू चाव और उच्च चाव बंदा फिर चीं आय आर्जन को लागी यो बतीलो सॉइल पिराने छह छह मले मले नहीं रहा राम रो आम दामी लीने चुके बंदे मले विश्वास करेंगे चाह पहला हमें हिमालय का नाव दाखिल था हमें ले सर वो अलग जगह बारे में जैसे कि भी खेती के बारे में हमें क्या थाने थे ना इसलिए हम रे ले ढंग ले बनाऊं कि क्या औरतीं बोलती हैं ना जब हिमालय का आए पैसी जैसे कि गोमूत्र लाऊं ना पड़ता गोबर यो लाऊं ना पड़ता बन्ने वाल सोमो को किस करो लाइफ नहीं रामरे कर देते हैं सामी पनी यो प्रोसेस में आमी अगाड़ी पढ़ते हैं सम र बाहरे को साथी हो रहा है रे पनी तब पहले धन्यवाद अलग जी को लागी रामरे कर दे उनसा बनने नहीं 
मलाई प्रशंसा दिनुहुन्छ त्यही प्रशंसा पाएपछि म धेरै अगाडि बढ्ने कोसिसमा छु म अरु कृषकहरुले पनि भन्छु अब हामी यसरी नै गरौँ जस्तो कि पुरुषले मात्रै नभएर महिलाले पनि सकिदाउँछ हामीले गर्न अब जति पुरुषले गर्न सक्छ त्यसले त्यसरी हामी म जति महिला भएर नि म अहिले यहाँ ती जैविक मलहरु जस्तो कि स्प्रिङ आफै गर्छु म जस्तो कि त्यो पहिलाको टुसारको पातल आउँछ एक दुईटा आउँछ त्यसले पुरा मोटो भएर आएर छ धेरै वृद्धि हुन थाल्यो त्यो टुसारमा पनि र अलैँची पनि निकै सुधार आएर छ अहिले हिमालयका कार्यक्रमले सबै गरेर We found that you know the climate is already changing in the region. Uh, we have strong evidence that the atmosphere is warming. There is increasing trend in the temperature, uh, and it is very likely that the trend will continue into the future, at least up to 2050. We also found that you know when it comes to water availability, actually, um, the amount of water that is uh, going to be available might stay stable. or even might increase uh, slightly at least up to 2050 and that is a kind of result that uh, was not actually uh, you know foreseen earlier and the reason behind is that uh, due to climate change the glaciers are going to melt quite uh, strongly so that is going to put more water in the system but later on due to enhanced uh, precipitation like uh, increased uh, monsoon precipitation there will be more water coming from rainfall so altogether uh, with a balance between you know melting processes and rainfall processes uh, our research uh, suggests that you know up to 2050 there will be no significant reduction in water availability or uh, at some places there might be even some increase in the water availability Uh, while average water availability annual water availability and seasonal water availability might not uh, change significantly uh, what is important is the change that is possible in the extreme events and that could uh, create uh, you know um, extremes in hydrological regime also for example uh, uh, floods and flash floods uh, landslides mass movements debris flow could be more Uh, frequent in the future and more uh, stronger water is very important issue in this region and we need to know more about the water the processes governing the flow of water what controls the water availability and what might be the change in the future so that the water management uh, the adaptation can be you know planned and implemented uh, in a better way in the future isimo.org/livestream and uh, just hoping that you have the password of our wifi if not i'll be happy to share that with you right now yes it's capital d 03 small m 12 small y 17 can i repeat again it's capital d 03 small m 12 small y 17 thank you
bank sends the signal to the caretaker's house, which is upstream, and then the caretaker sends this information to his village and the downstream communities, which in which they get almost two to three hours of lead time for preparedness. Now, what's critical in these community-based early warning systems is that the people in the community are actually operating and owning the systems. So the caretakers of the flood are... We have just received an update that the right, right, right Honorable President will be here in around 10 minutes. Thank you very much for your patience.
Just to remind you again, dear ladies and gentlemen, when the Right Honorable President enters, please kindly stand until the end of the national anthem is played. Thank you.
the ladies and gentlemen, we just need to wait a few more minutes. Thank you very much for your patience. Another announcement uh, that we need to make is please do not take photos from your mobile phones while the president is, the right honorable president is on the stage. Thank you. The right honorable president has arrived. She will enter in a few minutes. So the false alarm, ladies and children. <laughs> but good rehearsal, good rehearsal. <laughs> Shanti Bhumi Tarai Pahar Hima 
The Right Honorable Vidya Devi Bhandari, President of Nepal, Honorable Minister Mithila Chaudhary, Ministry of Population and Environment, Government of Nepal, Professor Dr. Gohar Rizvi, Advisor to Prime Minister, Government of Bangladesh, Dimpo Yeshi Dorji, Minister, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests, Government of Bhutan, Dr. V.K. Saraswat, member of the National Institute for Transforming India, Niti Aayog India. Her Excellency, Veronika Kodi, Ambassador of the Delegation of the European Union to Nepal. Dasho Rinzing Dorji, Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forests, Government of Bhutan, and also the Chair of the Isimod Board of Governors. Respected Prakash Mathema, Secretary of the Ministry of Population and Environment, Government of Nepal. Dr. David Molden, Director General of the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, ISIMOD, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Partner Organizations, Media Friends, ISIMOD Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the organizers of the conference, ISIMOD, and in cooperation with the Government of Nepal's Ministry of Population and Environment, and with the support from the European Union, Namaste, a very good afternoon to all and a warm welcome to the inaugural program of the International Conference titled Resilient Hindu Kush Himalaya, Developing Solutions Towards a Sustainable Future for Asia. I'm Naina Shakya, Partnership and Private Sector Specialist at ECMOD, and it is indeed a great pleasure for me to serve as host for this important event to it today. We are truly privileged by the presence of so many eminent delegates here from more than 25 countries. Thank you all for your support, for being a part of yet another important milestone in the collective efforts to build resilience and bringing about transformative change in the Hindu Kush Himalaya. To begin the inaugural program, may I please request Dr. David Molden, the Director General of ISIMOD, to kindly give his welcome remarks. Right Honorable President of Nepal, <coughs> Vidya Devi Bandari, uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, Excellencies, uh, Distinguished uh, Guests, Government Officials, uh, uh, Mountain Community Members, ISIMOD Partners, Youth, NGO, Private Sector Colleagues, Media, ISIMOD Staff and Friends, a very hearty welcome to all of you here in Kathmandu. Uh, as I understand, we have about people from about 25 different countries. Actually, about 250 people came to this event from outside of Nepal, which is quite a, a milestone. And certainly from our eight member countries, we have many, many representatives. Very big welcome to all of you. As you can imagine, for ISIMOD, this is a very special event to help us in our mission of a more sustainable and resilient Hindu Kush Himalayas. Um, also for ISIMOD, we use this event to help us guide our work in the future, and we also hope that you will find inspiration uh, from what you take away from the conferences. And indeed, one of the key outcomes of the conference is a network of practitioners, professionals, policymakers, communities, private sector, journalists, uh, who can share and develop uh, new resilient building solutions. And I must say these bonds that we'll make during the next few days are ones that I hope will last well beyond this meeting and well into the future, and that our friendship and communication will help us in the future as we are developing new solutions. Right Honorable President, on behalf of ISIMOD, I would like to thank you 
and the people of Nepal <coughs> for hosting and supporting ISIMO uh, in providing a platform where this kind of event happens, uh, where people can get together and make a difference for their countries, for their people, but also for Asia and the world. If you all flew into Kathmandu, or if you live here, you have seen the magnificent uh, mountains of the Hindu Kush Himalaya, a mountain range that extends from Afghanistan clear to Myanmar, an incredibly uh, diverse and rich uh, mountain range and societies in the region, serving more than 200 million people in the mountains. And actually about a quarter of humanity is dependent on water and other resources from these mountains. Uh, however, today, what we find are these mountains are under pressure, under pressure from climate change and a host of other changes in the region, migration, uh, environmental degradation, globalization, and many other factors. So what happens in the mountains matters. What happens in mountains matters to all of us here in the Hindu Kush Himalaya, but also to Asia and by easy extension to the rest of the world. So that we, when we invest our resources in building mountain resilience, it's an, not only an investment in mountains, it's an investment in Asia, it's an investment uh, for the world. Now oftentimes the narrative we hear is one about poor and vulnerable people and, and resources degrading. But I would like to use this meeting to change that narrative to change it to a more positive narrative of one where, where, we're seeing, uh, where we're seeing new economic opportunities for communities and for youth, about stories of partnerships that create these opportunities, and, and a lot more discussion about solution. Let's uh, build a narrative in which the HKH inspires change driven by sustainable mountain societies and ecosystems. And with this gathering here today, we're in a good starting point to change the narrative. Now this conference focuses on resilience right at the head. So let me take a few minutes just to see how we understand resilience. So changes and disasters are in a sense shocks in the way of our lives. So a flood, an earthquake, changing market prices, migration are all in a sense shocks to us. So these can very much set us back. But in this context, to be resilient uh, is to be prepared for such shocks, to be able to recover quickly from such shocks, and importantly, to bounce forward and build a stronger state than ever before. So here's an example of resilience uh, taken from Cadre District, not very far from here. Now we work uh, with our partner Ciprid, and, and one of the Ciprid colleagues told this story of a woman who was about to give up farming, and the, her husband had migrated out of the country. She was selling vegetables to Kathmandu. Cabre sells a lot of vegetables to Kathmandu, but Kathmandu people said, no, we don't want the pesticides on our vegetables. So we had the, our partner Ciprid had this idea of jolmal. I think you saw it in the video cow urine mixed with some local herbs. So she said she gave it a try. And, and it worked. And this woman is continuing to farm. And <clears throat> not only that, she's a voice in the, the women's group and the local community leaders who then also bring in other climate resilient solutions to agriculture. This women's organization, in addition, uh, is a way to prepare for future shocks, right? To be able to absorb future shocks. And indeed, that, that village has been really transformed when you see from that. So that's what we mean by resilience, bouncing forward to a state stronger than before. <clears throat> so over the next few days, we'll hear more and more stories about resilience like that. And it's, it's actually what inspires me and in keeping me going. I would like to end my opening remarks uh, by saying that mountains <coughs> are a shared resource. And we also know that, that decisions about mountains are best made through cooperation uh, and joint efforts between countries. 
But we also need other forms of cooperation. We need to bring in the voice of women and the voice of marginalized group to take more responsibilities in decision making. And we need to encourage and cultivate the voices of mountain youth who will lead future leaders and, vital, and who are vital to realizing a better future. Mountains bring us together. And it's quite amazing that at ISI mode, we routinely get people from eight mountain countries to discuss solutions, and you see that today. And it is this kind of cooperation between countries that will have payoffs now and very much into the future. And finally, I want to express my gratitude to the European Union, Ambassador Cody, the Ministry of Population and Environment, Honorable Minister Mithila Chowdhury, uh, for hosting and supporting this event together. Thank you all very much, and I look forward to this conference and moving us forward. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Dr. Molden. It is indeed an important event for ECMOD and for our regional member country partners as we jointly position the mountain agenda a step further. We now have the lighting of the Panas or the Nepali lamps, and I have the honor to cordially invite Right Honorable President to graciously inaugurate the international conference by lighting these auspicious Panas. May I please request Dr. David Molden to assist the Right Honorable President. Thank you, Right Honorable President. Much to my delight, I would like to invite Her Excellency Veronica Cody, Ambassador of the Delegation of the European Union to Nepal, to kindly deliver her remarks. Right Honorable Ms. Bidia Devi Bandari, President of Nepal. Honorable Ms. Mithila Chaudhari, Minister for Population and Environment, Government of Nepal. Honorable Mr. Sikander Hayat Khan Bozan, Minister, Government of Pakistan. Honorable Mr. Bir Bahadur Ushwe Singh, Minister, Government of Bangladesh. Honorable Mr. Yeshi Dorji, Minister, Government of Bhutan. Mr. Gawar Rizvi, Advisor to the Prime Minister, Government of Bangladesh. Mr. Prakash Matema, Secretary, Ministry of Population and Environment, Government of Nepal. Mr. Dasho Rinzin Dorji, Secretary and Isimod Board Chair, Government, Government of Bhutan. Dr. David Molden, Director General, Isimod. Mr. Ove Sarmad, Deputy Executive Secretary, UNFCCC. And Mr. V. K. Saraswat, Member, NITI, IOG, Government of India. Representatives of governments and international organizations, experts, members of academia, media friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and namaste to all. I'm very pleased to welcome you on behalf of the EU to the inaugural ceremony of the International Conference on Resilient Hindu Kush Himalaya, Developing Solutions Towards a Sustainable Future for Asia, which ISIMOD is organizing together with the EU. I wish to take this opportunity to introduce myself I've recently been appointed as EU Ambassador to Nepal, and I'm looking forward to further developing and strengthening the EU-Nepal relationship during my tenure here. The EU and its member states have been responding to current global challenges and opportunities in the light of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which they helped shape. This agenda is truly global. That is, it's a call to duty for all countries. Its implementation is a collective undertaking. We believe we are stronger, we can achieve more if we work together. And our societies are more prosperous, more harmonious, and our people better off if we work together. These are quintessential le lessons learned by the EU from more than 60 years of European cooperation and integration. Lessons we learned the hard way through two devastating man-made disasters, World War I and World War II. Collective action enables us to better and more effectively address global challenges. 
The 2030 Agenda emphasises the importance of sustainable management of natural resources for social and economic development. Target number one of the SDG 15 is highly relevant for the Hindu Kush Himalaya region as it explicitly mentions mountains among the ecosystems to be conserved, restored and sustainably used. It's important to bear in mind also that what happens upstream, for instance at the roof of the world in the Himalayas, also has downstream effects in the plains. In addition, interconnectivity of different natural zones does not stop at country borders. Therefore, it's good to see that this international conference brings together representatives and experts from the eight countries in the Hindu Kush Himalaya region, but also from further afield to collectively discuss key aspects for a more resilient HKH and to arrive, so I hope, on Wednesday at resilience building solutions which will serve to map the way forward. Resilience is the overarching theme of this con conference um, and just before me, uh, Mr. David Maldron, uh, Director General of ECMOD, uh, gave us a, a definition of, of what we should see as resilience. We have a number of, uh, of uh, Commission documents guiding our uh, response to development and our relations with third world countries, which also rely on, on the term resilience very heavily. The EU, in, commission, in its Commission communication of 2012, defines resilience as the ability of an individual, a household, a community, a country or a region to withstand, adapt and quickly recover from stresses and shocks. The EU Global Strategy on Foreign and Security Policy from 1916 takes the concept further. It speaks of resilience as a broad com concept encompassing all individuals and the whole of society that features democracy, trust in institutions and sustainable development and the capacity to reform. Support to resilience at all levels is also an integral part of the new European Consensus on Development from 2017 entitled Our World, Our Dignity, Our Future which is a key element of the EU's response to fighting poverty, a framework which fo focuses on four priorities, what we call the four Ps, people, human development and dignity, planet, protecting the environment, managing natural resources and tackling climate change, prosperity, inclusive and sustainable growth and jobs, and finally peace, harmonious and inclusive societies, democracy, effective, effective and accountable institutions, rule of law and human rights for all. We believe that uh, resilience in, in its real sense demands all of these things, all of these elements. Finally, resilience is also a cornerstone of the Paris Climate Accord, an agreement within the UN framework on climate change, keenly supported by the EU, which aims to keep a global temperature rise this century well below two degrees by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The consensus underlines that sustainable, resilient agriculture remains a key driver for po poverty eradication and sustainable development. Two-thirds of the world's poor depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. Investments in sustainable agriculture are needed to diversify production systems, prevent malnutrition and generate increases in productivity and jobs without harming the environment. Smallholder farmers and the poor remain of central importance with a particular focus on youth integration and women's empowerment. Sustainable agriculture must harness the greenhouse gas mitigation potential of agriculture while enhancing resilience to climate change impacts. What does all of this mean in the context of the Hindu Kush Himalaya region? What I've been giving, of course, is, is, is the macro uh, uh, world uh, where we look at the, the broad terms of our uh, collective international engagement. But what does it really mean for this region? This region of eight countries sources 10 major river systems in Asia that provide water and livelihoods for more than 210 million people. Near, nearly a quarter of humanity living downstream, that is almost two billion people, many of them still poor, depend on mountain resources such as water, food, energy, biodiversity and carbon. What happens in the, H, in the HKH has consequences for Asia and the world. Mountain communities in this region are already feeling the heat, the effects of climate change, and the consequences are also felt downstream in the plains, and all these effects do not recognize nor stop at borders. The recent catastrophic floods in Nepal, India, and Bangladesh this year demonstrate that communities and governments are struggling to prepare for and recover from these disasters. 
Moreover, climate change in the Hindu Kush region interacts with multiple other forces, including land use change, outmigration, and depopulation due to urbanization. Therefore, amongst others, resilience in the HKH region means that there is a clear need to step up regional cooperation, to be better prepared for disasters, to enhance the skills to adapt to a changing situation, and to generate new livelihood opportunities in the Hindu Kush region, and to boost self-reliance under adverse circumstances. What is the EU doing to fight global poverty, promote peace, address climate change, and to enhance resilience? The EU underpins its policies, which I mentioned earlier, with a substantial cooperation portfolio. Just for Nepal, Euro 360 million bilateral funding has been reserved for the period 2014 to 2020, and resilient rural development and agriculture is one of the three focal sectors of our cooperation. Amongst others, we are a major supporter of Nepal's agriculture development strategy. We joined hands on climate change adaptation and resilience building, and we work together on rural development in the far west of the country. The EU's Global Climate Change Alliance is one of the world's largest climate initiatives with a commitment of around Euro 350 million from 2014 to 2020. At least 20% of the EU budget is being spent on climate-related action during that period. Himalika, an Ichimod EU initiative, very nicely complements these efforts and actually allows us to be here for the next three days in this conference. Also called the Support to Rural Livelihoods and Climate Change Adaptation in the Himalayas, Himalika is a demand-driven regional program in which the EU invested 10 million euros since January 2013. Through active regional cooperation, Himalika aims to support poor and vulnerable mountain communities in the Hindu Kush Himalaya region. It focuses on the conservation of ecosystems, increased resilience, better climate change, better adaptation, equitable socioeconomic development through new livelihood opportunities, and poverty reduction. This regional program has five major components, action research, pilot programs, capacity building, policy and knowledge management. This international conference focuses on the role of a resilient Hindu Kush Himalaya in the future of a sustainable Asia. It's an excellent opportunity to reflect and exchange views with regional and international stakeholders and top quality experts about challenges, opportunities, and how to distill best and resilient practices. Counting on your active participation, I'm sure that the three days ahead of us during this conference will make a strong contribution to understanding the concept of resilience in the Himalaya Kush region and to map the way forward in the interest and in the benefit or to the benefit of the HKA region, Asia and the world at large. Last but not least, on this special occasion, may I also take the opportunity to thank governments of all member countries for their active involvement in fighting against climate change. I wish you all a pleasant stay in the beautiful Kathmandu Valley. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your deliberations. And we are grateful to EU for the support extended to us and for acknowledging our contribution to the region. May I now welcome Dasha Rinzing Dorji, Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest Government of Bhutan, and the Chair of the Ismod Board of Governors, to please deliver his remarks. Is it okay? The <clears throat> Right Honorable President, Government of Nepal, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, participants, colleagues from the AC mode, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here today at the inaugural session of the International Conference, Resilient Hindu Kush Himalaya, Developing Solutions Towards a Sustainable Future for Asia. I feel extremely privileged today to speak at this August gathering and on behalf of the CMOD Board of Governors and on my own behalf, 
I would like to join Dr. David Malden, Director General of the CIMOD, in extending a very warm welcome to the Right Honorable President of Nepal as the Chief Guest to this conference. We are deeply honored by your gracious presence. I would also like to welcome the Honorable Ministers from the governments who are represented here. Let me also acknowledge the Ministry of Population and Environment, Government of Nepal, for co-hosting and the European Union for supporting this conference. The theme of the conference is to develop resilience for the mountain communities in the Hindu Kush Himalayas. Since there is a huge body of technical knowledge and experts and expertise in this field, please allow me to share the vision and experiences of Bhutan as a different perspective. The perspective that I would like to share at this forum is the concept of the cross-national happiness, which is a development philosophy which was envisioned by His Majesty, the fourth King of Bhutan, in the 1970s. The philosophy underscores the need for holistic approach to development, looking beyond the conventional economic model. This novel vision, which was promoted and practiced in Bhutan, has been working well for the Buddhists, has served the Buddhists well, and has become a subject of great interest to the international community. The fruits of this development philosophy are visible in all spheres of development in Bhutan. That also includes many resilient features. To cite a few examples, it is probably only in Bhutan that the constitution of the country mandates that 60% of the country be maintained under forest cover at all times to come. And our recent survey shows that we have, in fact, 71% of the country under forest cover. We have also committed to the international community to remain carbon neutral for all times to come. And may I inform this gathering that as recently as 11th of November, we launched Bhutan for Life Initiative, the first project financed for permanence in Asia, which is significant not only for Bhutan, but for the region as well as the world in terms of conservation of biodiversity. Thus, I would like to say that the environmental conservation and the concept of gross national happiness is key to critical services such as clean air, clean water, and energy needs, which are important elements for building resilience for the future. Of course, when we talk about the gross national happiness, we also talk about four pillars and the nine domains. I cited the example of the conservation of environment. The other three pillars that take takes care of other things are the sustainable and equitable socioeconomic development, preservation of culture, and good, good governance, which are also supported by nine domains. While many of the domains are covered under these uh, pillars, I would like to specially, specially suggest and encourage that we give due importance especially to the three unique domains of psychological well-being, community vitality, and cultural re resilience in pursuit of building resilience in the HK, HKH region and beyond. And this brings me to share a statement which was made by His Majesty the King. And to quote, His Majesty said, the gross national happiness is about development with values. Development with values, I say again. Thus, in line with this theme of this conference, it may be timely, it may be appropriate, and, uh, and I would say that it will be useful to espouse a policy of development with values. Therefore, may I suggest that the conference deliberations 
consider to focus the discussions on this development of philosophy as an enabler of happiness for a better, happy, and resilient HKH, as I believe that development with values have and have come with inbuilt resilient features. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, participants, ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, I would also like to share another statement made by His Majesty the King of Bhutan. And His Majesty said, what we have in terms of natural resources is not what we have inherited from our forefathers, but borrowed from our future generations. Thus, I would like to stress upon the themes of this conference and say that all of us, all of us in the HK region and beyond, we have this responsibility to develop a resilient future for all the generations to come. Lastly, I would like to wish all the participants a successful deliberations in the next three days. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dasho, for your kind words and for your continued support and guidance to ISIMOD. Now I would like to request Honorable Minister Mithila Chaudhary, Ministry of the Ag Population and Environment of Nepal, to kindly deliver her remarks. सम्मानीय राष्ट्रपति जी मित्र राष्ट्र का माननीय मंत्री जी तथा माननीय सांसद जी विशिष्ट अतिथि जी महामहिम राजदूत तथा कूटनीतिक निकाय प्रतिनिधि जी नेपाल सरकार का सचिव जी इसी मोड का महानिर्देशक तथा इसी मोड बोर्ड का सदस्य जी सम्मेलन का सहभागी मीडिया कर्मी महिला तथा सर्जन बिरिन नेपाल सर, सरकार जनसंख्या तथा बाताबरण मंत्रालय र अंतर्राष्ट्रीय एकीकृत पर्वतीय विकास केंद्र इसी मोर को सह आयोजना मा संपन्न होना गई रहे को यह सम्मेलन को उद्घाटन सत्र मा सम्मानीय राष्ट्रपति जी लाए हार्दिक स्वागत करना चाहन्छु साथ है कार्यक्रम मा सहवागी होना भय का राष्ट्रीय एवं अंतर्राष्ट्रीय प्रतिनिधि जी हरुलाई पनी यह सम्मेलन मा स्वागत करना चाहन्छु मेले 2041 साल देखी राजनीति शुरू करे पची मेरो मन मायोटा सपना थियो कि मेरो देश मा पनी सम्मानित पद मा महिला लाए स्थान दिनु पर छा यो सपने रहन छा कि फिर सकार 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 पनी हुन छा त्यो मले विश्वास थिए ना तर हमरो हजुर जब राष्ट्रपति को भाई रचुन नो भतियो बेला मले एकदम त्यो दिन मले खुशी लायो अनि महिला हरुमा पनी क्या हो महिला हरुमा क्या पनी उत्साह जायो भने हमरो अब राज माता हुनु हो वहाँ कहीं न कहीं महिला हरो को लागी रामरे गर्नु हुन्छ भने र सपे जना आशा लिनु भाई को त्यो त्यो आशा पनी सकार भाई रहा था महिला सदन माती ह� आज हम आपनों ले क्या भागमानी ठान चुवने वहाँ प्रमुख अतिथि होने जा त्यों वेल आपने यो कार्यक्रम हम ले भाग ली था मो अत्यंत खुशी चु रा आयोजक जिले पनी धेरे धेरे धन्यवाद दिना चाहन चु कि वहाँ संगे मेरो कार्यक्रम मिलाए दिनो हो वहाँ मेरो गुरु पनी होने जा सदन माँ मो भेदा वहाँ ले खोजे तो मौला गए रमो हले नमस्कार करती है तो वहाँ संग रामरो रामरो कुड़ा वहाँ सिखाना होती हूँ सब ऐसे सब ऐसे महिला को सिखाना होती है मौतरा बुद्धि कम भाई को कारण ले वहाँ संग धेरे कुड़ा सीखना जानती है 
कि कहीं न कहीं राम दो चार शब्द सीखाई दून हूँ मज राम बोल्छू सदन में तस्त मेरो एटा मन में थी हिंदू कुश हिमालय पर्वतीय क्षेत्र को संरक्षण न विस पूर्व मान म्यानमार देखि पश्चिम में अफगानिस्तानसम फैलि भूभाग में बसोबस करने जनता को सामजिक रर्थिक अवस्था में सुधार तथा जैविक एवं सांस्कृतिक विविधता को संरक्षण में इस सम्मेलन बा सहयोग पुग्ने विश्वास करे छु इस सन्दर्भ में इस क्षेत्र में कार्यरत वैज्ञानिक योजनाकार तथा अन्य सरोकार बालासंग अंतरक्रिया होत्यंत सान्दर्भिक नेपाल भर्खर मत नया संघीय गणतांत्रिक स्वरूप को संविधान को कार्यान्वय को चरण में छ यस नया पद्धति अंतर्गत संचालन करूर्ने वातावरण संरक्षण एवं दिगो दिगो विस का कार्यक्रम को लगी सम्मेलन का बिग सहभागीजीहर को ज्ञान तथा अनुभव हमारा लगी महत्वपूर्ण उपयोगी होने भशा करे छु जलवायु परिवर्तन को विश्वव्यापी असर यो क्षेत्र में अछूतो रहे असर कम नेपाल सरकार पनि प्रतिबद्ध छ हमी जलवायु परिवर्तन संबंधी पेरिस समझौता सम, सम्मानित व्यवस्था संसद समेत अनुमोदन कर सकता छो भर्खरे मात्र जलवायु परिवर्तन महासंधि का पक्ष राष्ट्र को तेसो सम्मेलन में नेपाल को तर्फवा मेरे नेतृत्व में सहभागी प्रतिनिधिमंडल ने थप प्रतिबद्धता जाहिर कर साथ कार्यान्वय का प्रयास बारे अंतरराष्ट्रीय जगत लानकारी कराइ थी वातावरण संरक्षण रिगो विस कार्य को लगी इस सम्मेलन ने सहभागी सब राष्ट्र मार्गदर्शन करने विश्वास लिए कि छु इस कार्यक्रम में सब तह का सरोकार वाला को सहकार परिहार भो कुरा में कस को दुमती होना सकते जस्तों मैं लग इस सम्मेलन को समुद्घाटन कर सम्मान राष्ट्रपति जुलाई में हार्दिक धन्यवाद ज्ञापन करदु आप महत्वपूर्ण जिम्मेवारी कई दिन का लगी थाती राखी इस सम्मेलन को सफलता का लगी मित्र राष्ट्र पाल्न भैया माननीय मंत्रीजी सभासदजी तथा नेपाल स्थिति कूटनीतिक निग का प्रमुख एवं प्रतिनिधिजी विस का साझेदार एवं सहयोगी संस्था का प्रतिनिधिजी जलवायु परिवर्तन व्यवस्थापन तथा दिगो विस क्षेत्र में कार्यरत महानुभावर धन्यवाद दिन चाहू सम्मेलन को सफलता को लगी अहोरात्र खटने जनसंख्या तथा वातावरण मंत्रालय का सचिव लगायत कर्मचारी साथी रीसी मोड का महानिर्देशक एवं कर्मचारी सब हार्दिक धन्यवाद व्यक्त करना चाहूँ अंत में सम्मेलन को पूर्ण सफलता को कामना करदु धन्यवाद जय नेपाल Thank you very much honorable minister with the ministry of population and environment as the organizing partner of the conference we are we can collectively strengthen regional cooperation for developing resilient building solutions for the hindukush himalaya dear ladies and gentlemen it is indeed my great pleasure to now cordially invite and welcome the right honorable president of nepal please present the presidential address माननीय जनसंख्या तथा वातावरण मंत्री मिथिला चौधरी मित्र राष्ट्र भारत बंगलादेश रूटान का माननीय मंत्री 
मित्र राष्ट्र का माननीय सदस्य मित्र राष्ट्र पालन भैया अन्न सहभागी अतिथि नेपाली स्थित कूटनीतिज्ञ का प्रमुख तथा प्रतिनिधि ईसिमोट बोर्ड का अध्यक्ष तथा सदस्य विशिष्ट अतिथि तथा सहभागी राष्ट्र सेवक भद्र महिला तथा सज्जन वृंद नेपाल सरकार जनसंख्या तथा वातावरण मंत्रालय तथा अंतरराष्ट्रीय एकीकृत पर्वतीय विकास केन्द्र को संयुक्त आयोजना में होना लगी इस अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन को उद्घाटन समारोह में सहभागी होना पाऊँ मैं अत्यंत हर्ष को अनुभूति हिंदू कोश हिमालय पर्वतीय क्षेत्र का राजनीतिक नेतृत्व नीति निर्माता योजनाविद प्रा, प्रागिक समुदाय तथा विद्युत वर्गसंग अंतर्क्रिया होत्र को विस का लगी अत्यंत सान्दर्भिक रत्वपूर्ण छ इस सम्मेलन का अवसर में इस क्षेत्र का विज्ञ अमूल्य ज्ञान रुभव उजागर करूने भाई विश्वास हिमालय हिंदू कुश क्षेत्र को करीब मध्य भाग में रहकर काठमंडों में इस सम्मेलन को आयोजना होने उपयुक्त नहीं हो भाई लगे यही उपत्य में अंतरराष्ट्रीय संस्था ईसिमोड को कार्यालय समेत रह ईसिमोड पर्वतीय वातावरण रिकस का लगी महत्वपूर्ण अनुसंधानकर्ता संस्था र विशेषज्ञ को योगदान सहित तीस वर्षदी कार्यरत रहोक में इस संस्था को म प्रयास को सराहना करना चाहूँ हिमालय हिंदू को क्षेत्र का मानव विकास संबंधी गतिविधि तथा यहाँ को वातावरण संरक्षण ने संपूर्ण एशिया महाद्वीप को सघन विस बसोवास को क्षेत्र समेत असर पारने हु हमी हिमालय हिंदू कोश भनी रहता पूरे एशिया महाद्वीप को लगी ध्यान दिपर्ने तर्फ पी संबद्ध पक्ष को ध्यान आकृष्ट करना चाहिए पूर्व में म्यांमार देखि पश्चिम में अफगानिस्तानसम फैल विशाल हिंदू कोश हिमालय पर्वत श्रृंखला जैविक सांस्कृतिक सामाजिक तथा आर्थिक विविधता ने भरिपूर्ण गंगा लगायत धर ठूला तथा मजौला नदी प्रणाली को उद्गम क्षेत्र को रूप में इसको भौगोलिक प्रणाली वातावरण तथा पर्या परिवर्त टकीय दृष्टिकोण ने समेत उत्तिक महत्वपूर्ण छन सरोवर ताल कैलाश पर्वत गंगा रिंधु घाटीसंग समग्र मानव सभ्यता अनुन्याश्रित रूप में जोड़े कुरा यहाँ विदित हिंदू कोश हिमालय पर्वत श्रृंखला इस क्षेत्र का अरबों मानस को जीवन आधार रहे प्रसंग में जलवायु परिवर्तन तथा अन्य मानवीय क्रियाकलापले समग्र विश्व में जस्त पर्यावरण को दृष्टि अत्यंत संवेदनशील हिंदू कुश हिमालय पर्वतीय क्षेत्र में देखा पड़े नकारात्मक असर को न्यूनीकरण कर चुनौती को विषय भेजना एशिया को दिगो विस का लगी उपाय बारे इस सम्मेलन में पर्याप्त छलफल होने न जलवायु परिवर्तन ने आम नागरिक को जीविकोपार्जन रातावरण में प्रत्यक्ष असर पड़े कृषि प्रणाली जल एवं जैविक विविधता का क्षेत्र में पड़े नकारात्मक असर ने कृषि तथा खाद्य सुरक्षा रनजीविका अन्न जनजीविका अन्य विविध क्षेत्र में समेत अछूत रहन सकते छेन प्रकृतिसंग अति नई नजिक में रहे अर्थतंत्र में योगदान पुर्यावने हिंदू कोश का महिला जलवायु परिवंत परिवर्तन ने अज धे चुनौती थपीद जलवायु परिवर्तन का यी रस्ते नकारात्मक असर न्यूनीकरण कर इस क्षेत्र का हमी सब को साझा जिम्मेवारी हो इस संदर्भ में यह अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन ने उचित मार्गदर्शन करने मैं आशा लु 
जलवायु परिवर्तन संबंधी संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघीय महासंधि को एक पक्ष राष्ट्र को हैसियत नेपाल ने पेरिस समझौता में आपने तर्फवा प्रतिबद्धता जाहिर कर सकते हमी अति कम विकसित राष्ट्र को अकार का मुद्दा में समेत सचेत रह जलवायु परिवर्तन संबंधी अंतरराष्ट्रीय वार्ता प्रक्रिया में हमी अति कम विकसित राष्ट्र को समूह को अध्यक्ष को हैसियत निर्वाह भूमि का समेत इस अवसर में स्मरण करा चाहूँ हाल जर्मनी को बोन शहर में संपन्न जलवायु परिवर्तन संबंधी संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघीय महासंधि को पक्ष राष्ट्र को तेईसों सम्मेलन में नेपाल सरकार को तर्फवा जनसंख्या तथा वातावरण मंत्री को नेतृत्व में रहे प्रतिनिधिमंडल ने भूपरिवेष्टित पर्वतीय रल्प विकसित मूलुक मुद्दा लाई प्राथमिकता का साथ स्पष्ट रूप में राखे हिंदू को हिमालय थुप्रे अल्प विकसित देश जलवायु परिवर्तन को जोखिम न्यूनीकरण करने कार्य में हम साझा धारणा जलवायु परिवर्तन व्यवस्थापन संग पर्वतीय विस का सवाल विश्व को सर्वोच्च शिखर सगरमाथ को देश ने जैसे सवाल अंतरराष्ट्रीय मंच प्राथमिकता का साथ उठाऊ आई विश्वव्यापी उष्णता र जलवायु परिवर्तन में हम योगदान नगण्य हुआ हिमताल को विस्फोटन होने बाढ़ी को खतरा अमूल्य जैविक संपदा को ह्रास को पानी को स्रोत में होने कमी भूमि को उत्पादकत्व में कमी रता को बसाई सर का नकारात्मक प्रभाव हमी बढ़ी नई पीड़ित छी पर्वतीय विस र वातावरण को कुरा हमारा जनता को जीवन में प्रत्यक्ष को चुरे मधेश रून क्षेत्र को समिष्टिगत रिगो व्यवस्थापन एवं संरक्षण को रूप में देखा पर्द बीच को सुमधुर संबंध कायम कर प्राकृतिक तथा भौगोलिक संवेदनशीलता रर्थिक विस बीच उपयुक्त सतुलन रादत्म्यता राख जरूरी कुछ देश को एकल प्रयास यो कार्य संभव होमरा साझा सवाल में साझा रणनीति र कार्यक्रम तय यो सम्मेलन ने सहयोग करने जलवायु परिवर्तन को नकारात्मक प्रभाव न्यूनीकरण करने समुदाय को अनुकूलन क्षमता बढ़ाने कार्यक्रम नेपाल सरकार ने प्राथमिकता में राखे संविधान ने जनसाधारण में वातावरण स्वच्छता संबंधी चेतना सहित देश में उपलब्ध प्राकृतिक स्रोत साधन को संरक्षण संवर्धन रातावरण अनुकूल दिगो रूप में उपयोग करने नीति अवलंबन कर हमारा प्रयास विश्व समुदाय में समेत प्रशंसित भैया हमीसंग उपलब्ध सीमित स्रोत रन को अधिकतम उपयोग करी जलवायु मैत्री विकास तथा अनुकूलन कार्यक्रम सकारात्मक नतीजा दिन था जिस हमी प्रतिबद्धता जना दिगो विस को लक्ष्य हासिल करना समेत थप सहयोग पुग्ने मैं विश्वास लु राष्ट्रीय अनुकूलन योजना स्थानीय तह में अनुकूलन का कार्यक्रम को कार्यान्वयन जलवायु परिवर्तन संबोधन करने तैयार कर बजेट कोड जस्ता प्रयास मार्फत जलवायु परिवर्तन विकास कार्यक्रम कार्यक्रमक एक अभिन्न अंग को रूप में अंगीकार कर प्राप्त अनुभव का साथ ही इश्यू मोड लगायत अन्य सरकारी गैर सरकारी साझेदार संस्थासंग को सहकार में नेपाल सरकार ने देश का विभिन्न जिला जलवायु मैत्री नमूना गांव कार्यक्रम संचालन कर सकता रो प्रयास अन्त्र विस्तार करने लक्ष्य रहे दिगो विकास लक्ष्य पेरिस समझौता तथा पर्वतीय विकास 
का मुद्दा को सफल कार्यान्वयन का लगी हमी विश्व समुदायसंग हाते मलो गु को विकल्प छेन क्षेत्रीय स्तर में समेत मित्र राष्ट्र तथा क्षेत्रीय साझेदार संस्था को सह कार्य अपरिहार्य आपसी हित तथा समग्र क्षेत्रीय विकास तथा स्थायित्व को लगी समेत हिंदूकोश हिमाली क्षेत्र का राष्ट्र बीच आपसी समझदारी तथा सहयोग आवश्यक इस तथा समझदारी अभिवृद्धि समेत यह सम्मेलन काम करने मैं विश्वास लु इस प्रसंग में जलवायु परिवर्तन अनुकूलन का कार्यक्रम तर्जुमा तथा ईगो वातावरण संरक्षण का निमित्त प्रत्यक्ष रूप में सरकार राख्ने स्थानीय जनसमुदाय राज्य को तर्फवा विशेष पहल करूर्ने तर्फ ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहिए पर्वतीय क्षेत्र का अपने विशिष्ट विशेषता रहा यहाँ का विशिष्ट समस्या साझा समाधान का उपाय पहचान करते दिगो पर्वतीय विकास को नमूना प्रस्तुत करना इस क्षेत्र में कार्यरत नीति निर्माता विज्ञ र अनुसंधानकर्ता बीच इस सम्मेलन अवधिभरी घनीभूत छलफल होने न इस छलफल को क्रम प्राप्त उपलब्धि इस क्षेत्र का जनता का हित में प्रयोग भाई आशा लु हिमालय हिंदूकोश क्षेत्र में वातावरण संरक्षण का साथ साथ यहाँ का बासिंदा को आय रीवन स्तर उकाशन विशेष योजना आवश्यक रहे इसमें पूरे पर्वतीय श्रृंखला का मूलुक बीच सहकार्य थप प्रभावकारी कार्यक्रम लिया उचित होने अंतरराष्ट्रीय तथा क्षेत्रीय सहयोग सद्भाव र सहकार बिना जलवायु परिवर्तन तथा पर्वतीय विकास संबंधित मुद्दा संबोधन कर सकिन्न प्रकृति संरक्षण कार्य राष्ट्रीय सीमा भि मव छसर्थ राष्ट्र बीच ठोस सहकार को आवश्यकता पर्द संसार का अन्य पर्वतीय श्रृंखला में भाग हिंदू को हिमालय क्षेत्र को विशेष चुनौती बारे अज बड़ी ध्यान दिपर्ने जस्ते साउथ एशियन ब्राउन क्लाउड फेनोमेना हम हिमनदी तथा हिमवत क्षेत्र को वातावरण पड़ रखे असर तथा बादल फाटने अर्थ क्लाउड ब्रस्ट फेनोमेना बारे विस्तृत वैज्ञानिक अध्ययन र अनुसंधान होने वाले पर्वतीय क्षेत्र का जनता भविष्य में पर्यावरण अनुकूल जीवनयापन प्रणाली विकास कर सघाऊ आपो संबोधन समाप्त करा ज्वलंत विषय में संबद्ध सब को गंभीर रूप से ध्यान आकृष्ट करा चाहू सिंगो मानव जाति को समोन्नति का निमित्त दिगो शांति अपरिहार्य रहो विषय विश्व को हर एक कुना में महसूस करते सुव्यवस्था रि कायम कर आवाज उठी रहो परिवेश में समेत शस्त्रास्त्र को होड़बाजी में ठूल धनराशि खर्च होने असाध्य दुख को विषय हो प्रकृति को अनुपम उपहार को रूप में प्राप्त यह साझा धरती रुंदर मानव जीवन सहित जैविक विविधता में संकट थोपर्ने क्षेत्र में लगानी करूंदा जलवायु परिवर्तन रातावरण विनाश रोक्न संपन्न मूलुक लगानी बढ़ा न्यायसंगत हो भाई लगद अंत में इस सम्मेलन को पूर्ण सफलता को कामना करते इसमें होने छलफल हिंदूकुश हिमालय क्षेत्र र यहाँ का जनता को समग्र आर्थिक सामाजिक सांस्कृतिक एवं पर्यावरणीय विकास बारे ठोस र व्यवहारिक सिफारिश प्राप्त होने मैं आशा लु धन्यवाद
Thank you very much, Right Honorable President. We are honored and we would like to express our gratitude for your presence here today with us. Your blessings are very important for us in making this conference a success. May I please request Dr. David Malden, Director General of ISIMOD, to kindly present the token of respect and gratitude and a gift basket of mountain products to the Right Honorable President. Now please allow me to welcome respected Prakash Mathema, Secretary of the Ministry of Population and Environment of Nepal to kindly deliver his vote of thanks. Right Honorable President, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Invitees and Participants, Members of the Media, Ladies and gentlemen, namaste. Climate change and other drivers of change have already begun to impact our communities and ecosystems. These impacts are making us more vulnerable to further change. <laughs> Stories of resilience often begin like this, with bad news, with tragedy, and with pain. But the story is made interesting by what happens after that. Through that together, they need to learn from one another solutions to the issue. The conference brings more than 300 years the efforts of resilience.